What's up everybody and welcome back to another Pro Guides video. My name is Nathan Ng and in today's video we're going to be discussing all the upcoming changes in patch 13.12. So without further ado, let's get right into it. First, let's focus on the buffs and here we have Ash as our first champion. Ash has been struggling a bit, but if you think about these changes, you can already guess that we might see some more support Ash in the future. Especially with Echoes of Hylia, this could be really troublesome, as she's such a great applicant for this item. From ahead, it is unbearable, and from behind, it has great comeback potential. Next up is Gangplank, and in the past years, his champion was always guide tier in the hands of his one tricks. With this change, he's getting a bit more power during the mid game. For Kaisa, we have something neat, as current itemization kind of troubles her in terms of getting evolves as fast as possible. Riot thought it's a great idea to grant her a bit more AD per level to combat that issue. A victim of spell detail difference is Nasus. As simple as his kit is, it's also the problem with it. He can barely compete with all the newer releases and needs to be buffed to stay somewhat relevant, giving him back some more life steal and lowering his ultimate cooldown or baby steps into the right direction. In the mid lane department, we have a buff to Orianna. This one really comes to shine once we hit the mid and later stages of the game. This provides Orianna with a higher burst combo that's intended to one shot or chunk out enemies. However, this will not be a massive increase in her power. Have you ever asked yourself after a bad game, what am I missing? Or sought help from impatient friends? Or browsed desperately for answers that only bring up more questions? Your self-doubting days are over with Discovery, the first game-focused AI. Discovery is trained on the world's leading esports athletes to be your everyday personal coach. That's right, Discovery can help you improve your gameplay by giving you tips and strategies to take your game to the next level. Get started at ProGuides.com. Next to the Orianna changes, we also have some adjustments to Rise. The champion has been an absolute nightmare to balance ever since we went through the multiple reworks. His solo Q win rate has always been bad and every change turned him into a demon for competitive. Giving him more quality of life with the E missile speed and AP ratios can really make the champion quite scary in terms of raw damage output. Another champion who has fallen out of the meta quite a lot is Sivir, and here we have some adjustments. For losing a bit of her base AD per level, she's gaining a better ricochet modifier. With all the Trinity Force builds out there, I wonder if Sivir can also benefit from this one. Let's see what the future holds. With the buffs done, we're now moving on to the nerfs of this patch, and finally we see a nerf to Gragas. For ages, the champion has avoided nerfs, and I am so glad to see that they're tackling his sustain. Think about it, the champion was allowed to infinitely sustain through laning phase without losing anything while being as strong as he is. The next nerf is also very much deserved and it's coming for Kha'Zix. Rather than adjusting his Q's isolation or base damage, they're taking a different route and approach by lowering his base AD. Will this be enough to remove this champion from the Apex tier? I don't think so. Similar to that, we also have a change to Kog'Maw, which feels a bit weird. Kog'Maw is a really good champion picked in certain situations, not just a blind pick. In these situations, he'll absolutely be OP, and in other games, he won't be able to play at all. Fundamentally speaking, this won't turn him into a bad pick when it's already a good game for him, but it will lower people's willingness to just blind pick Kog'Maw every game. The next balancing nightmare comes in the form of Kassante. In solo queue, this champion has been underperforming for ages already, but for comp, it's an entirely different story. When this champion is locked in, he goes even in pretty much all lanes and is an absolute abomination in terms of power. Therefore, Riot has great trouble finding the right ways to adjust him as his entire kit is just insane. Buff him for solo queue and he'll be an absolutely broken champion in comp. But if you nerf him, he's gonna suffer even more in solo queue. A true balancing nightmare. Speak of nightmares, every player dreads facing Lulu, so you'll be happy to hear that she's getting adjusted. Less armor, less passive damage, but slightly more shielding. Similar to this, Milio is also getting hit. The champion's presence and pick rate was just way too high and reminds me a bit of Renata's incident in the past. Making these champions easier to kill and lowering what they provide without ruining their identity is a solid approach to existing issues. The next adjustment comes to a champion that has been very healthy ever since people got more experience with her. With the Rel update being such a success, it's now time to adjust her power level a little bit as she was actually on the verge of being too strong. Her support win rate was skyrocketing and her jungle presence was decent as well. This should put her a bit closer to being balanced in terms of her win rate overall. Our following pick completes the horrible to balance theme and here we have Yumi the magical cat. Lowering the attack speed and healing provided alongside the ardent nerves makes her a lot weaker. Nonetheless, her font of life and Echoes of Hylia interaction is something that needs to be monitored, as it's really powerful in teamfight situations thanks to her ultimate slow. For context, Yumi is going to max heal second, and therefore this is a nerf towards her mid-game power curve, especially targeted around Hylia's completion. 
Last for the nerves comes in the form of Zeri, and here we have a massive change. Her Q no longer procs Sheen. That's pretty crazy to me. Given her recent Triforce adventures, which was also a blast from the past, Riot finally chose to close the chapter. Doing so will massively impact her power levels, and therefore they gave her some compensation buffs, and we are now curious to see how Zeri as a champion develops and what items she'll love now. However, I can tell you what everyone loves, and it's winning free RP in a giveaway. Do you want 11,525 RP? Then click the link in the description below. Sign up for the pro membership and drop your username in the comment section as well. Now, let's talk about champion adjustments, and here we have Lucian and Rumble. For Lucian, we have a change to his passive. Rather than activating upon being empowered, it now only triggers when he's being healed or shielded. However, there's one additional thing. Lucian is also being rewarded by enemies being immobilized. Whenever that happens, his passive also activates. But sadly, the flat damage and scaling of it has been tuned down. Nonetheless, it opens up new solid duo constellations for bot lane, and I think he would be pretty crazy with Leona or Nautilus. Oh boy, another rumble change, and during times of Magic Pen being so strong, this is indeed a scary one. They're taking a bit of power away in different aspects, but grant his Q a percent max HP modifier. So your Q is now similar to Orn's W, and your E gets a new max HP scaling. Nonetheless, your first rank on ultimate gets another 30 second cooldown slapped onto it which can really hurt certain matchups that are very dependent on your ultimate to gain the advantage. Now let's take a look at the system changes and their buffs for this patch. Immortal Shield Bow now receives more lifesteal to put emphasis on its identity as it's supposed to make you tankier while also giving you sustain. For mid laners, we have a change that you'll be happy to hear about. You now gain plus one gold per minion which on paper may not sound much. But it's still free gold, and especially given reset timers and cheap price tags for Lost Chapter, this might allow you to recall one wave earlier. Next up comes in the form of Moonstone. It was an unbearable item in the past prior to its rework, but after the introduction of Helia, this item kind of lost its charm as its core identity was changed. As a consequence, it's a constant target of adjustments and buffs to put it on an even level of Helia. With all the other item changes in place, other items just don't really feel as satisfactory, or lost their slot in proper itemization paths. To combat the huge stat stick items and make other items more competitive, we're seeing buffs to both Phantom Dancer and Static Shiv. In order to maintain some healthy item balance, it's also important to nerf the most overbearing items for any roles involved, and here we have Ardent and Mandate. With support items being as cheap as they are, while also providing massive advantages for allies, it was time to lower their power a little bit. The same can also be applied for Bloodthirster. Compared to before where this item fed into the idea of making you sustain, it now turned it into a tactical nuke item that provides you with an absurd amount of AD that pushed certain champions over the edge of being too strong. Effectively speaking, they're also removing Gale Force as a valid option for Yasuo and Yone as they're gutting its crit scaling. On the other hand, they're introducing a new rune choice for Bruisers as they're nerfing Overheal specifically for ADCs, but buffing it up for Bruisers by making a scale with HP. ADCs will not be too happy to hear about the red buff nerfs as well. Less damage, less slow, less life regen, but if you get to have these two in the future, you may not be too sad about this change. There's one thing that I have to say though, especially looking at the different approaches when it comes to nerfing and buffing energized items. We're constantly seeing number adjustments rather than streamlining all energized items. Rapid Fire loses all its power scaling and primarily focuses on its unique effect rather than the bonus damage. Isn't that a bit weird when a few patches ago they made clear that energized items are all about infrequent but heavy hits? Well, the same thing applies to the support items. The price tags got lowered massively, but the item's effectiveness are constantly getting adjusted and lowered patch by patch. So far, the entire item rework really seems like an absolute chaos for balancing, and we're really eager to see if Riot wants to continue with their current system, or if we'll get another revamp soon. Alright, that concludes today's video, thank you guys so much for watching, and be sure to leave a like and sub to the channel to never miss anything pro guides ever again. See y'all in the next video, and you know the drill, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.